Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalender, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body Is Your Pharmacy radio show on Desi 1250 AM, radio that listens to you. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Good afternoon, folks. This is Dr. Shalinda Sodi along with my co-host, Dr. Anju Sodi. Good afternoon. And today we have a topic which a lot of people uh, suffer with and uh, it's sometimes it's very annoying and embarrassing. And uh, the topic we're talking about, Dr. Anju, is uh, IBS, uh, Irritable Bowel Syndrome today. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll be discussing that. So, folks, uh, if you know or if you have IBS or you've been diagnosed with it, uh, you know, we will be discussing for the next hour or so. Uh, to call studio, uh, the number to call studio is one eight four four three zero one one two five zero one eight four four three zero one one two five zero. And the show we have is called Your Body Is Your Natural Pharmacy. So we are discussing about irritable bowel syndrome. And uh, those of you, uh, you know who have a little bit difficulty in uh, talking in English, so you can also talk to us. You can Hindi, Urdu, or Punjabi. So, you can talk to us about the phone. one 844 1250 तो ये एक आंतरियों की बीमारी है तो जिसके बारे में हम बात करेंगे तो अगर आप सोचते हैं कि आपको ये है तो आप हमें कॉल कर सकते हैं तो एनी वे सो डॉक्टर अंजु देयर आर सम स्टैटिस्टिक्स अबाउट द इरिटेबल बाउल सिंड्रोम व्हिच वी हैव अबाउट 10 टू 15% ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन वर्ल्ड वाइड सफर विद द इरिटेबल बाउल सिंड्रोम दैट इज वेरी मच ट्रू एंड आल्सो अबाउट 200000 पीपल एनुअली दे गेट डायग्नोज्ड uh, with irritable bowel syndrome. So, this is a kind of annoying uh, condition, you know. This and is very annoying too. And uh, uh, when we get the patients at the office too, so many times, like they come for the different reasons and uh, uh, by taking the history, we find that they're suffering with some sort of uh, irritable bowel symptoms or like uh, dyspepsia gut related symptoms right and you know the difference when we trying to diagnose the irritable bowel syndrome it's usually rule of uh, rule outs that mean we need to make sure nothing else is going on when everything else is ruled out then that's usually when we start calling that most irritable probably bowel. you have a bowel uh, you, that you have a irritable bowel syndrome so it's actually a functional disorder of the large intestine, you know. So it's a, it's not like uh, uh, there is any structural defect is noticed in the large intestine when the people, those who have irritable bowel. So um, 
there is not much about the small intestine in irritable bowel. It's always, uh, uh, you know, majority of the large intestine related issue. So uh, if you been told that your large colon is totally healthy and it doesn't look anything and you're still having an issue of, a, 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 you know, constipation, diarrhea or, or a bloating or pain or anything like that, uh, you know, most probably, uh, you know, once we have ruled out everything else, then it is considered as irritable bowel syndrome. So the other thing is uh, uh, it could come with as an abdominal pain and sometimes some people have altered bowel function. That means, uh, you know, sometimes they have regular bowel habits, or, you know, and other times they don't. You're, they may be alternating between bowel, uh, constipation or diarrhea or bloating. Uh, and sometimes it's just a hypersecretion of uh, intestinal mucosa which comes into the uh, through the bowel so if you notice a lot of mucous membrane uh, passing in the, with the bowel then you know it could be uh, irritable bowel syndrome especially if uh, there is not much seen in the large intestine um, in the, you know in the colonoscopic exam and uh, you know or other diagnostic measures done and if everything been ruled out so that's probably most often the common symptoms for irritable bowel syndrome and uh, you know uh, like you mentioned uh, you know a lot of people feel they sometimes have nausea or they have anorexia or gas issues and uh, varying de uh, degree of uh, anxiety or even depression related with it too. Yeah, that is true. Like many times uh, it can be, it can be related to any of those like the, um, in Ayurveda it calls a bhayaj aptisar, like people with the anxiety and the stress, they right. tend to have more like these symptoms. They feel like, uh, and the, uh, like today's word i think a uh, lot of people are suffering with these issues too so you um it's very nice in ayurvedic medicine they mentioned about bhayaj atisar that mean related to the nervous indigestion we have you know the it's also called ibs is also called nervous indigestion you yeah. know and uh, that mean uh, or the nervous dyspepsia so uh, it's amazing how in the old text uh, have described IBS. Yes. And, you know, uh, would you just uh, tell about the Bhaya Jatisar? I mean, it's uh, uh, for our audience, those of you, you know, who come from Southeast Asia and from India, you will understand the word Bhaya Jatisar. So, uh, so I will let lot Dr. of like a lot of times, and I have uh, in my practice, I have noticed like the uh, youngsters, like mm -hmm. the from the teenage to like the middle age. Um, especially the school kids, they uh, come with the parents and they have this uh, uh, issue with where they like they have the uh, constipation and then they have the diarrhea issue. And by taking the history, many times I have noticed like they having more diarrhea symptoms close to when they are having some uh, assignments or like uh, stress is high at work or like the at the school children like the uh, close to the their uh, finals and something like that so uh, it's it's really affects their that that with the anxiety with the nervous system that affects their digestion and that affects their uh, colon area and the it affects the motility and then they start having uh, this issue with the um, diarrhea. So it's basically very much uh, stress induced. Stress induced. And then many times, like, you know, they even they are. Um, uh, and Dr. Shalender, many times, like f with the when this, these symptoms they get, their, their food intake is not good either. They are right. doing the stress eating. They and are so eating, that's probably yeah. exacerbates the symptoms of uh, yes, you know yes, the bhayaj yes. atisar or like we call it in uh, uh, in um, you know the modern diagnosis include like n uh, you know uh, nervous indigestion or sometimes we call intestinal neurosis you know that's also but uh, you know when we talk about the bhayaj or the stress related symptoms it's usually do not correlate with IBS, but you know IBS is itself secondary. A secondary, so it's a it's a cofactor, but yes. and, but it's not. So, uh, folks, uh, you know, so uh, number to call to uh, to the studio uh, to the show, your body's your natural pharmacy is one eight four four. 
1250 अगेन 1844301250 आप हमारे साथ हिंदी उर्दू और पंजाबी में भी बात कर सकते हैं तो आज का जो टॉपिक है वो है इरिटेबल बाउल सिंड्रोम आंतड़ियों की बीमारी है तो इसमें जो है थोड़ी बहुत इरिटेशन होती है आंतड़ियों में तो उसके कारण जो है कई और लोगों को कब्जियत या जो है अतिसार जो हो जाता है तो उसके लिए आप हमें कॉल कर सकते हैं तो इस एक घंटे के शो में दिस इज़ वट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे एंड सो यू नो द जनरल कंसिड्रेशन यू नो वी नीड टू कंसिडर वेन वी आर ट्राइंग टू रूल आउट द आई बी एस इज इट्स मोस्ट कॉमनली यू नो गैस्ट्रो इंटेस्टनल डिसऑर्डर एंड वी सी इन जनरल प्रैक्टिस एंड रिप्रजेंट्स अबाउट थर्टी टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ ऑल द रेफरल्स मेड टू द गैस्ट्रोट्रोलॉजिस्ट यू नो सो डिटर्मिनिंग Uh, incidence to prevalence figure is virtually uh, you know almost dependent on once we have uh, referred out and colonoscopic exams have been con- done and to usually that's how we figure out that it's e- irritable bowel also the sigmoidoscopy sigmoidoscopy can be done as well or you can do the whole colonoscopic exam can yes. be done so it uh, some for some reason <coughs> even with those say there's about 15% of population suffers there are more women more women than men or sometimes i feel that men they do not uh, consider Repo- it <laughs> so men may be having a that macho uh, type of uh, you know uh, okay i'm fine i'm fine and they do not report but for those who are reporting so based on that statistic say uh, the women more o- often are reporting that they have ibs i think it's also uh, if we look into our own practice you know we find women are actually more in general take care of their health compared to the men mm-hmm. and you know men do not like to seek health or preventive health uh, until really something is gone um, to the down that hill. is true that is very so, much so uh, guys uh, uh, being a male physician here i am uh, i'm speaking on all of you guys so do not ignore your health it's important that you get your uh, preventive checkups and uh, you know get yourself uh, checked because it's just a, it's good to be preventive rather than uh, you know emergentic treatments we don't want to like that and we are very much oriented in preventive health at our clinic so uh, you know again back to the ibs so mentioned that uh, you know the more women uh, reports about it uh, compared to the uh, guys uh, like i mentioned earlier the ibs is often a diagnosis of exclusion uh, clinical judgment must be used to determine the needed extent of diagnostic process so it's uh, usually we want to make sure you do not have a, a you know inflammatory bowel disease you know sometimes people can complain about that i have abdominal pain but you know you we try to figure out what's causing the pain abdominal if it's uh, gi related issues or if it's uh, you know liver issues or other organ issues or you know so usually uh, sometime whenever we conducting a physical exam on ibs patient it's inconclusive it's not very diagnostic and usually it's very hard because you see a lot of bloating in the physical examination and all that sometime and other time you're just tender because you know the intestines are not moving or not or other time they're hyperactive yes so you know there's a lot of those uh, activities happen so Uh, you know usually uh, whenever you notice is majority of these uh, individuals are reporting that they feel distended stomach that's the most common uh, uh, you know issues when they're coming and then they mention about that uh, they are not regular bowel habits uh, you know the when we are trying to do ibs we need to focus on on lots of other issues you know what may be going on and those need to be ruled out So now uh, f- uh, you know folks uh, uh, you know number to call to the studio is 18443011250 and uh, y- y- you know we are discussing about irritable bowel syndrome so dr anju like you mentioned about in you know, the bhaya jati sar is that's one of the factors which we look into if it is caused by the stress factors mm-hmm. or if it is an uh, environmental issues or, or it, it can be as the other thing is the food allergy is the um, also need to be ruled out too like uh, right. many times uh, it is secondary to certain foods they are eating uh, certain type of food which is making them having this issue 
सो फूड एलर्जी सेंसिटिविटी और लाइक द फूड सेंसिटिविटी फूड एलर्जी टेस्ट कैन बी डन एंड मैनी टाइम्स वी हैव नोटिस लाइक द बाय स्टॉपिंग सर्टन फूड्स लाइक द डेरी इज मेजर डेरी एंड द ग्लूटन पीपल आर वेरी सेंसिटिव टू दीज फूड्स दीज डेज एंड दैट really helps so, so you know it's interesting you bring that up you know there are some certain condition which may mimic ibs yes so may mimic uh, ibs and those are the condition like uh, like you mentioned uh, you know certain diet factors uh, you know sometime uh, uh, you know excessive tea oh excessive tea and coffee yes exactly and these can be an issue or carbonated beverages and sometimes simple sugars simple sugar is big one that's actually the biggest factor that is the biggest factor and uh, then uh, also the other things which can uh, mimic uh, ibs uh, infectious uh, enteritis such as uh, amoebiasis and giardiasis so giardiasis and is more ca- uh, common in um, here in northwest giardia is also called uh, it's a you know it's a, uh, it's like a majority time this happens is because when we are camping out we going to the river rafting or camping outside and drinking water from the rivers or the lake or swimming in the lake and you know uh, you can get these parasites and that can cause a uh, very much symptoms like ivs yes. but that's totally different that's why i said when we ruling out the irritable bowel syndrome it's uh, we need to rule out all of these things that you're not drinking too much coffee is not there is too much caffeine intake not too much sugar intake uh, carbonated beverages and you not been infected with the parasite so yes. that's one of the thing which we need to rule out also we need to rule out if there is a inflammatory bowel disease before we start calling uh, uh, ibs uh, the other thing is lactose intolerance yes that's a huge right and a lot of people are lactose intolerant and the people who drink milk and all the sudden they get bloated or they get diarrhea or you know other symptoms most probably uh, y- you have a lactose issue uh, from the milk so these are the individual uh, who usually uh, when they take uh, uh, lactase which is an enzyme uh, or uh, lactase mixed uh, dairy they handle it better so lactose intolerance is a different but it can mimic like ibs you know that's another thing uh, and then lot of uh, peep population because they go through the constipation issues they abuse laxative doctor yeah that is the other thing even like uh, people people are like the taking the metamucil a lot too yeah, right so that is also not very helpful right they take either bulking agents or they taking picking up the pills you know like uh, over the counter pills uh, laxatives uh, and that can also sometime irritates the irritates inter- it and then it's like uh, in the beginning they are taking it for the difference uh, like they are having constipation and then they start taking this and uh, they can like sometimes we i have noticed like they overdo it too and uh, that's uh, really because uh, uh, laxatives are the irritants it irritates your gut it's not helping you by treating it it's not the cure it's yeah. just irritates the intestine so you can it's have a bowel movement right and it's uh, usually very much conditional and it's uh, just a symptomatic relief so usually <sighs> we need to look into the underlying factors the other thing uh, dr anju is the c- intestinal candidiasis and that can also give symptoms of ibs ibs yeah the and the people who eat more sugar who has tendency towards uh, more carbohydrate uh they will have uh, more of those symptoms and sometime uh those people who have taken antibiotics or antacids or you know a- antimicrobial treatments um they can have a disturbed bacterial growth uh, in the gut and they start mimicking like uh, you know the ibs symptoms too but it is usually secondary to there is a usually history which will indicate that you have been on certain types of treatments yes so history taking is very important and <laughs> also knowing that what you have done so when you go to the doctors make sure you remember to mention all these things yes. otherwise the treatments can be uh, very much variable and malabsorption 
that's huge as well uh, so malabsorption diseases such as uh, pancreatic insufficiencies and celiac disease uh you know we talked about celiac disease we in the past we have done in the past and so to let you guys know the celiac disease is much more the gluten uh, gliadin issues which is wheat camoth and any of those grains which carry gluten uh they can uh, uh, cause a celiac to get worse because these are the individual who cannot handle gluten so uh, we w- w- like i said if in case you are interested in learning more about celiac you guys can uh, visit our website and uh, you know there is uh, uh, all the old radio shows which we have and you can listen to that as well so anyway these are the things which also kind of mimic like uh, uh, ibs uh, other uh, are uh, symptoms like metabolic disorders like adrenal insufficiencies diabetes mellitus a lot of people who are diabetic they always complain but i feel bloated i kind of don't the reason is because the sugar imbalance they these guys cannot handle the sugar and also hyperthyroidism in hyperthyroidism uh, gut motility increases as well so you know that that can mimic like an ibs but it is not and again uh, the reason i'm going through all the things which mimic like ibs but not our ibs is to let you all know that there are so many rule outs which have to be done before you consider anything and then there can be a fecal impaction that means the uh, in some time uh, intestines get blocked and that can also lead for no known reason and that can happen but can cause it like uh, ibs type of symptom and then diverticular diseases that diverticulosis what is the diverticular is uh, or diverticulosis is a pouch like growth which happens in the large intestine and it's like uh, your uh, in large intestine is just becoming ballooning out into the different end that can cause some of those symptoms and usually physical examination or a, a sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopic exam can reveal up and the final is a neoplasm some sort of a tumor or growth or cancer some sort of in the intestinal tract can lead to these type of symptoms so so folks if you paid attention uh, these are the things which we need to rule out before ibs is diagnosed yes and also i would like to add dr shilandan mentioned about the in, um, inflammatory bowel disease so which is also mimics like the similar kind of that but uh, differentiate is like the uh, in the inflammatory bowel uh, people usually have a bleeding they bleed with the um with the when you are passing the stool you can see the right. fresh and blood and sometimes you can see it and sometimes you micro you which micro. May, that mean you may not see it but there is always that's why the diagnostics so then the stool analysis is important right and uh, you know if you notice a blood in the stool uh and along with the pain you know that need to be ruled out to make sure it is not a, a inflammatory bowel disease and sometimes for no known reason sometimes people just pass a little bit blood too and you know it can be secondary to the hemorrhoids too right so but if you see the blood along with the if you see the fresh blood after the stool that is usually through the hemorrhoids uh sometimes it can be due to the inflammatory bowel too and but usually sometimes the streak of the uh blood into the if you notice and if you have somebody has those symptoms too uh that is a rule out that you can rule out that inflammatory bowel disease so you know when the uh, folks when you are uh, uh, going to doctor for this uh, uh, bowel condition ibs or something there are certain tests which will do so we will be taking a short break and uh, in order if you like to call us 1844301250 1844301250 and we'll be right back after short break for quality ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues we offer a holistic wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases call us at 425-453-8022 for more information panch karma detox treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body our clinic in bellevue washington offers over 36 years experience in ayurvedic treatment call us for more information about our panch karma treatments at 425-453-8022 that's 425-453-8022 
If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. All right, folks, thank you for coming back. And uh, today's topic is irritable bowel syndrome. And uh, before the break, we discussed about how we rule out all the things before we uh, diagnose IBS. There are other things which, uh, Dr. Anju, we do in IBS is in some time, we do comprehensive stool analysis. Uh, it's called comprehensive stool and digestive analysis. Also, uh, we do complete blood count and uh, we look into the erythrocytes as well. And uh, then serum protein concentration is also looked at to diagnose. And then uh, if nothing else is found, then sigmoidoscopy is uh, also indicated or sometimes colonoscopic exams are considered to rule out the IBS. Um, then there is a therapeutic uh, uh, consideration, Dr. Anju, which I think majority of uh, our population would like to know how to treat how to treat it and uh, you know the basic is a uh, irritable bowel is a <coughs> is a condition which will keep reminding you throughout the life that it is not gone yes it will keep reminding but i have let noticed like uh, with the patients um, um, on the treatment if they are good in following if they are good in um, um, like the uh, like the elimination diet to elim- eliminate the certain foods for some time and uh, then like the give the, them the some herbs to help them um, strengthen their gut uh, they r- usually are the good they respond well and if then they if they eat a little bit of the uh, like the food they are not able to eat right it does not bother them that much as it is bothering when right. they are eating it all the time. So, uh, when we're doing a therapeutic consideration, uh, uh, Dr. Anju, uh, like you mentioned, uh, we focus on the uh, increasing the dietary fibers. Yes, that is very, very important. And then also you mentioned, uh, like you mentioned, uh, eliminating allergic or intolerant foods. Uh, yes, uh, I will say the intolerance. Yeah. Like sometimes people are like, it's uh, saying uh, intolerance is a better <laughs> way than the allergy because the certain people do have allergic response to yes. you know like uh, when they eat then they can have but uh, w- w- we try to make sure the people understand we you know there's a, a different types of allergic responses and majority population are sensitive or intolerant so mm-hmm. there are very few people who are very severely allergic and that's when you know that you cannot have that like yes. people having shrimp allergies or, uh, or the peanut allergy. Peanut or allergy. Yes, those are totally those are different. different, but they can cause these kind of symptoms. So then we also, um, like you mentioned about bhaya jati sar, so controlling the psychological components. These yes. are the three ways to uh, yes. address the, the IBS. Yes. So it's simple, by increasing the dietary fiber and also uh, avoiding the offending foods or the, uh, in, uh, the allergic foods, we can also say. And uh, then the things which we get under with the stressed out, uh, with which we really get stressed out. So those are the factors which really need to be uh, uh, taken care of when we're trying to uh, heal, uh, deal with the IBS. So, um, uh, Dr. Anju, there, there were uh, 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 studies done that uh, people with the IBS uh, improved when we given them um, uh, increase in dietary fibers. And they were given it for long and thorough, and after the long, thorough history, they were given it, uh, and they, f- they really reported a, a wonderful result that they felt improved. And uh, patients with constipation, uh, they improved with the dietary fiber. But uh, now I will come back as there is a phone call uh, which uh, has just come in. So we will take that phone call and I will uh, get back to the dietary fibers again. So any caller, this is Dr. Shalinder Sodi on the show, Your Body's Natural Pharmacy. Go ahead, uh, tell me, what is your question? Hello, Dr. Shalinder, this is Kunal over here. So I had a quick question. I was recently studying about this. So I said it that metamorphin is kind of cause to diarrhea as well. So is it a myth or does it have some 
medical ethics in it. Uh, the, you know, the, your question is uh, around the metformin medication, and that's usually given in diabetic patients. And certain individuals can develop diarrhea with metformin, but again, it can irritate the uh, GI too sometimes. And mm -hmm. uh, usually, uh, you know, either uh, that could be dose issue too. So sometimes managing dose in a proper way and uh, reducing dose that can uh, help with the diarrhea. Okay. So, so you know, mm -hmm. I think it just need to be discussed with the physician whoever have prescribed, and sometimes reducing the dose will do it. Uh, though. Uh, when we discuss about IBS, it is, again, it's a drug induced, so it is not the cause of IBS. Mm -hmm. It's not the IBS. It's much more is a uh, side okay. effect of the medication and which can happen. So that, that's totally different okay. than uh, what we are discussing in today's topic. W won't you say, Dr. Okay. Yes, that would be the, the symptoms can be like we were talking about the mimicking, like sometimes with the antibiotics or sometimes by... Uh, any drug can um, cause it too, and there is a glucose issue too, so that also need to be considered. Yeah, well, thank you for your question, Kunal, okay. and uh, uh, mm -hmm. keep listening to the radio show, and if you have more questions, feel free to call uh -huh. us in future. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. So, thank if, you. Yeah, before this call, uh, I was talking about uh, uh, dietary fiber, Dr. Anjus, that we noticed that uh, when the individual who were given uh, uh, increased in the dietary fiber, they reported that uh, their bowel habits were much better, they improved. And uh, the one thing is, uh, uh, the there was a study conducted on it, uh, and uh, they wanted to see uh, that uh, if the dietary fibers played a role. And the, they, they were using a wheat bran. Yeah. And that's the, you know, the fiber. Again. Again. <coughs> and um, there was a mixed results, even though they noticed improvement, but certain population did not improve it. So, you know, when we using a wheat bran, like you mentioned. It can be, it can be like the people who has the intolerance to the gluten. So then it's not a uh, good idea to have the increase the wheat bran. Right. Because it will carry some of the, <laughs> some of the, the gluten sensitivities in it. And the people who are sensitive to the gluten and they, they they can definitely have an issue with the with the this uh, you know digestive issues because the gluten causing the sensitivity so and uh, that's that's the one of the thing so when we're taking a bran uh, folks uh, so make sure it is not a wheat bran and you can definitely take a oat bran which um, uh, can be helpful and uh, also making sure that the bran you take is a hypoallergenic type of bran, like psyllium husk is a good, uh, good bran, and that can be taken, and it really can be helpful. Uh, or fruit or vegetable-based uh, brands are also helpful, or you can uh, try the other uh, types of uh, cereal brands which are not containing the gluten or gliadine in it, because that can be a real factor. So majority of the population which were given uh, uh, the bran, uh, they, uh, they th uh, when in their diet we included about 30 grams of fiber, either from the fruit or vegetable, uh, uh, they, they definitely had much more regular bowel habits and they reported less abdominal pain and they felt overall much better. So, and uh, so the only consideration when you're taking the fiber, we want to make sure it is not wheat-based bran or the gluten-based bran, which might be not helpful in the individual who are really uh, uh, having already, you know, the bloating or pain in the abdominal. Uh, so these are the one things which I'll say that's contraindicated when you're taking fiber. Stay away from the wheat bran and do much more non-wheat based br uh, fibers that's much better um, also uh, the importance of food allergy dr anju we uh, realized that lots of people are uh, allergic to the food so we need to rule out the food allergies uh, either by uh, you know we most often what we find uh, that there is a 
majority time people when they're thinking of allergies like you mentioned earlier they think of mm-hmm. IgE based you know not the prostaglandin based uh, allergens uh, which are the uh, IgG and uh, IgM type of allergies which are slowed or the which cause yeah, delayed delay. reactions <laughs> in the body so you know those tests need to be ruled out and there are food allergy tests available uh which uh, we conduct I- even in our clinic we do it sometimes people uh, do like the scratch test uh, that is not very reliable right. and more like with the that's much blood. more ige ige based. yes uh, immediate reaction mm-hmm. and more reliable is the blood test uh, with the delayed and the immediate reaction all right so you know once we ruled out that uh, the you know uh, you know then w- the diagnosis of ibs can be made uh it's interesting that in ibs patient uh, may have associated s- uh, symptoms suggestive of vasomotor instability like uh, palpitation hyperventilation and uh, fatigue uh, excessive sweating and headaches these can really also coexist uh, which is uh, consistent with the food allergy and the intolerance reaction so these are the reaction which also happen in allergic responses and the sugar uh, dr anju like you mentioned uh meals high in refined sugar can contribute to ibs as well as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can happen with yeah this. that is the other thing which is like the sibo a lot of people know about like the sibo um like this which is the small intestine bacterial overgrowth and what that ha- does actually it decreases the intestinal motility that mean the um, uh, the natural peristaltic uh, activity of the, uh, the intestine goes slows down with that so sugars are really culprit and uh, you know the when blood sugar levels rise too rapidly uh so the that actually is the cause of uh, gi uh, uh, tract uh, slow down um majority of the you know if you look into the way the physiology works around the sugar is in the digestion is is that it get uh, uh, absorbed in the very first part of the small intestine duodenum and jejunum and jejunularia and uh, that actually uh affects the portion of the gi tract uh, the m- you know the whole way because it s- slows down the rest of the part, uh, gi tract so the the main thing is when you take sugar it makes uh, uh, duodenum and ju- jejunum as a tonic it just sits there it's yes. not doing much so there is not whole lot so cutting down th- all those the sugar junkies uh, you need to really pay attention uh i i really say if you have a sugar uh, cravings or all that do talk to your physicians uh you know and there are easy way to take care of this then it's not that hard to manage a uh, sugar uh, craving and especially if you have those symptoms and then you have the sugar cravings too so it need to be addressed need to be taken care of right and in ibs uh, that's the one thing you can uh, do is avoid uh, the simple sugars or you know all those things um uh, you know like uh, dr anju uh, you know there's very easy fix too when we discussing about the uh, ibs uh, uh you know the mint plants yeah mint is great like we can give uh, 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 indian people like they like in the in uh, summer time they eat like the mint chutney a lot uh, which is a good way to help with the motility right uh, and you know the that's interesting that in our ayurvedic text and in our cooking we kind of pay quite a bit uh, attention to the cool spices which really cools down calms down the digestive system yes and uh, the mint plants fall into that category so based on that uh, there was actually study conducted on the menthol uh, the ma- mints and peppermint the peppermint oil right and uh, they found that uh, these volatile oil actually had a very a healing effect on the smooth muscles uh, uh, of the intestines and it uh, reduced the uh, colonic spasm so it cut down reduced the spasm in the in- large intestine and as well as in the small intestine so you know a- and again uh you know these studies were conducted on the peppermint oil and they also did with the enteric coated capsules to just to see uh, on the other hand whenever a uh, lot of uh, uh, gi specialists actually give uh, enteric coated uh, peppermint oil before conducting studies because it really calms down the spas in the intestine 
so uh, you know uh, so one of the thing which dr anju maybe you can uh, tell about uh, uh, to all our listeners uh, when we are making mint chutneys that it shouldn't be very spicy so it's right like yeah like the uh, traditionally they in india like they like to put like the g- some things the with the people with the irritable bowel cannot handle and that would be like the lot of spices they cannot handle it uh, does not go along so when they are making the mint chutney i also will suggest to add some cilantro too and the spices in the salt to taste and the cumin powder can be added and the ginger is another thing dr shilinder which i we tell all our patients all the time to which also helps with the gi uh, you can add the ginger into the fresh ginger into the chutney too and but you can also have some and it's probably quantity based again quantity you don't based. want to put too much of too it much ginger, but yes. you know uh, it does have a little bit spiciness to it but it's very soothing it's very soothing too as so long you don't put too much of too it too much and also the some ginger powder can be taken before the meals too and not too much it also again quantity. depends small le- depends on the so i will like to add dr shilinder little bit with the our to our listeners about the ayurvedic prospect so ayurveda is like it's a imbalance all the diseases are imbalance of vata pitta kapha which is the three doshas three humors in the body and the balancing those doshas uh, is the cure and uh, uh, like we are talking about the irritable bowel and this is like this is a vata imbalance so vata imbalance into the body so we need to work on that we need to ha- see how what uh, supplements can be helped and what other activities like we talked about the anxiety is the nervous system same thing is with the in the ayurveda it's a vata vata is also the nervous system related so all those uh, psychological factors yes. what you're talking about yes. when we talk about vata it's what vata. we're talking about so i'm about just the trying to like what is the ayurveda is it's the similar right. way like at the vata and the uh, the vata is like the colon is the s- area of for the uh, uh, vata for right. the vayu the large intestine large intestine right and when it's not in the its balanced condition that can create lot of problem um, in like you will see those all those symptoms with the abdominal pain to uh, feeling gaseous or feeling uh, the dyspepsia nausea uh, those type of symptoms and uh, to balance that out to again uh, like the food plays major role so we need to be seen that what foods can cause it so i do suggest to my patient and the vata people if somebody is uh, like in the uh, today's routine some people are really busy they have some symptoms they ignore it uh, they like to eat like they don't know about their dosha what they what they are doing and they like to eat only uh, like the cold food they do not have time to cook and even then they complained about like if you are one of those who complains about having some symptoms but then you do not have time to cook so you are eating like a s- ball of cereal with milk in the morning uh, in the afternoon maybe a cold salad and uh, with some uh, some fruit in it and also at the night maybe sometimes just the fast food or like even if you are eating like mostly you are eating the cold raw vegetables it's not going to help you mm-hmm. by cooking food it will be or the steaming the vegetables would be more helpful to those people and uh, i think the chewing is also chewing is very important chewing and the drinking water is very important because right. uh, that's uh, that's most important thing right so i want to just to make sure the listeners when we think drinking water not at the time of meal not at the time of the meals but throughout the day and uh, during meals it just a couple sips just a uh, ginger tea sips of warm water or some ginger tea or herbal tea chamomile or tea chamomile or the anise tea fennel seed tea or the tea. Menth- peppermint menthol, tea peppermint uh, so tea peppermint tea yeah that would be great yeah so having peppermint tea before the meal will definitely comes down the stomach and that yes. makes it ready for the uh food like all you think uh, mentioning but the water y- you yes. know disorders. and then like that there are spices you need to use uh in the food to like, not the very hot spicy uh, spices but you can use some uh, um cumin powder coriander powder uh, fennel seed powder uh cardamom can be used too right. and little bit lo- all these things you just mentioned have an essential oil yes and which has a menthol related family so uh, they really very cooling and calming very cooling and calming and little bit low on the like the black pepper i would not suggest not too much i think that can irritate Irrit- in the individuals a little bit can be sensitive. used and see how you how your body is <coughs> 
and also dr shlinda do you i uh, i would like to add like the yoga can be very effective too mm. so or the pranayam can be very effective too and that actually will address the issue of the anxiety, anxiety. stress and f- you know some those emotional feelings and depression right yes 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 so uh, uh people like if you want to if you go to yoga um even if the like the uh, some diaphragmatic uh, uh breathing would be very helpful so kapal bhati would be helpful all right and uh, alternate nostril alternate would be nostril very nostril nostril breathing would be helpful sitli would be very helpful too oh, because it's cooling it's cooling so uh, all those things uh, can be helpful too especially with the um anxiety related uh, symptoms right so you know the i think one of the things which we really uh, uh, address is like uh, keeping making sure that uh, you know we pay attention to the mental emotional aspect uh, anxiety and depression and as well as uh, the people who are more prone to get stressed out easily the yes. small things if makes it that need to be addressed as well with the ibs because i do find the vata component in these individuals is really really high yes and also i would uh, like to add that uh, vegetables which is more uh, like the cruciferous fa- family vegetables like the cauliflower and the broccoli and the brussels sprouts uh, that need to be uh, like that taken in the small quantity right and or they need to be cooked in to such a way where in, yes cooked with the garlic and the cooked vegetable not in the raw salad form right and also like little bit if there is uh, uh, like the little bit inflammation inclu- uh, involved then like the lot of tomatoes sometimes people eat a bo- lot of citric foods which can be also a problem too all right that need to be avoided so uh, the people you mean who are taking too much of uh, acidic type acidic, of yes because it will irritate the irritate gut, the gut the more more and they they can get these kind of symptoms so and then in the uh, i think a lot of people know about the trifala uh, so trifala is a uh, combination of uh, harad baheda and amla and that is uh, another like the very good which helps to support digestion uh, absorption and elimination so that can be taken right in ayurvedic medicine uh, it's been uh, uh, considered or revered as a rasayan and uh, uh, i'm sure our listeners are well versed with the word rasayan and rasayans are those which actually keeps your uh, uh, digestive system immune system intact and you know keeps your whole system healthy and trifla is uh, one of those ingredient and uh, the one thing about uh, in uh, ayurved it is mentioned that uh, anything which is fall into the category of rasayan they can be taken they throughout their life throughout the life and also the ashwagandha ashwagandha uh, is, is very like helpful very helpful and for like the vata for the vata disorder sitavari is the another herb which is great for the uh, this these are the cooling herbs all right and it's interesting uh, dr anji you mentioned ashwagandha and sitavari both of again fall into the category of rasayan rasayan so all these three combination trifala ashwagandha sitavari they are very much rasayan and it can be taken on routine basis so ashwagandha actually also cuts down the adrenal uh, stress hormone uh, for, you know the cortisol level it reduces that it balances out the adrenal gland so people like uh, we're saying but bhaya jatisar or the stress induced uh, p- uh, these are the individual who will be beneficial uh, benefited with the ashwagandha and taking and i do recommend uh, uh, ayush ashwagandha highly uh, because of the and the way uh, uh, it is collected and wild harvest and clean and you know pesticide free not every herb is same so i do recommend i use uh, products uh, when it comes to the herbs to take so anyway uh, what else uh, dr anju how about probiotic did we talk about the probiotic no we have not the and the probiotic do play a huge role uh, you know we mentioned about the uh, dysbiosis or uh, 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 the condition where we have a uh, unhealthy uh, uh, bacteria in the small intestine and in the large intestine to tell all the uh, listeners uh, we in our intestine actually throughout in our body uh, talking from the superficial skin to the mouth cavity to the whole gi tract we have different uh, sorts of bacteria which are actually working for us they are not all the bad bacteria so whenever the dysbiosis with the imbalance of the flora happens uh like i mentioned either because of uh, chronic uh, intake of antibiotic or antimicrobial studies uh, uh, medications or uh, you know s- 
immunosuppressive therapies or the cancer treatments they can actually uh, create that imbalance of the flora and that's when some people start noticing this type of IBS type of symptoms happening so the probiotic in that condition really really come very healthy and and they really help you a lot so uh, bifidobacterium and uh, acidophilus uh, you know different uh, uh, cultures of this are really very helpful and uh, the natural way of uh, the probiotic is uh, taking taking it yogurt right so uh, like the homemade yogurt i would recommend uh, like the a lot of indian population they do make homemade yogurt and uh, so that is the best and a little bit like the if if it ferments a little bit that's like people make kefir uh, yeah. from that that is great too but again like some people if they cannot handle the lactose right then they, then they <coughs> may have to rely on the taking probiotics right and what i find dr anju with the people who are either lactose intolerant or uh, cow dairy intolerant uh, they usually perform better on goat milk goat milk and yes. a lot of population even if they are lactose intolerant uh, uh they do much better on the on goat, the goat m- milk and so the goat mi- milk uh, goat uh, dairy can be used goat milk can be used goat um, sheep dairy can be sheep used sheep dairy can be used yogurt goat yogurt is available All and, right. and uh, you can even make at home make at home too. and we make our and yogurt at home you know all the time uh, so sometimes like um, uh, the parents uh, com- like that they children are so used to of having some sort of cheese so uh, the goat cheese i recommend if it's ca- if it can like they really have to use it mm-hmm. Right. Uh, that is recommended um so the uh, the other when we talking about the probiotic and the lassi you know the uh, buttermilk uh, yes. especially uh, a, that can be taken on regular basis in ayurveda it is mentioned takra can be taken every day right so in the, in the and the best time to take is the morning or afternoon but not at the night time night and you don't want to take takra at night that mean the buttermilk you don't want to take at night and if you the home milk takra is considered as the best or the buttermilk yes. is the best and l- if you let it ferment even more when it has that sour smell to it that's the best and you can take uh, as you know com- uh, up to your you know maybe half cup or f- couple ounces uh, back home uh, you know we have taken glasses as full uh, and that's a really good way of doing uh, you know, uh, replenishing the gut flora and uh, then also like the i will mm-hmm. add like the taking the curcumin powder the turmeric is so common in our uh, food like uh, we put turmeric in almost everything and but if you have some these type of symptoms taking little bit of the extra curcumin tur- or turmeric powder uh, you can mix it with the either like uh, co- like if you are not eating the dairy coconut milk is the great uh, way to mix it up and it really uh, makes a good drink by you can add like little bit of the honey if uh, with the coconut milk with the coconut milk and you can have make that drink and that really helps to calm the uh, like your gut to uh, yeah so folks uh, you know we are discussing about ibs as we coming to the last few minutes so when we trying to do the therapeutic approach uh, uh, like i mentioned earlier uh, usually paying attention to the fiber intake that fiber imp- intake is very important and making sure it's not a wheat bran it's not a wheat more based. the fruit and vegetables uh, uh, or the psyllium or husk the psyllium husk would be better way and also making sure uh, uh, eliminating or uh, determining uh, what food you are either allergic or sensitive yes and that is the only done by uh, you know by uh, you can that be done that you need to see some practitioner and uh, at our food, clinic yeah, we do the food allergy we do it and the food allergy test can be done and by like the eliminating like you need to talk to your uh, uh, like and then we can help you with like how to figure out like what foods may be bothering right and you know as soon as we start imp- you know kind of globally addressing the things then things get improved with nibs also stress reduction we talk about uh, stress reduction also i would like to add like not of time i have noticed with the ibs people are having symptoms like the joint pain arthritis type of symptoms they are having right. too and that's because of they are having allergic response yes. and allergies usually cause inflammatory response in the body and you will see 
so the uh, then stress reduction and the yoga and pranayam Pro yoga and pranayam in the dietary like the avoid the cruciferous family and the beans too that like the sometimes some beans can cause it too soaking is very important and cooking on the low heat and dr anju i found that uh, people who kind of do soaking i always advise them use a little bit of acidic medium you know either use a couple tablespoon of vinegar in soaking yeah. or the lemon lime that breaks down the phytates which are present in the beans uh, yes. which are majority time are the culprit behind causing the bloating or issues other thing which we talk about the exercise gentle exercise are uh, taking about daily daily leisurely about 20 minutes of walk after eating after the main meals like lunch and dinner you know yes. that actually helps to stimulate and the finally having a peppermint tea chamomile tea and mint and lemon in these type of things really enhances the digestion so folks uh, the, the, you know we both dr anju and me we practice at ayurvedic naturopathic medical clinic in bellevue and you feel free to call us uh, to see us for any reasons for any if you have a digestive issue the clinic phone number is a uh, 425 453 8022 again i will give you the phone, phone number for the clinic It's four two five four five three eight zero two two. It's me and Dr. Anju. We both work from so Monday through Friday, and uh, you know, feel free to call us. And we thank you for uh, calling and uh, you know and uh, listening to us today. Thank you.